Sometimes you just have to work hard to get results. Being a good guitar player, becoming a better guitar player, becoming a good guitar player, becoming a great guitar player, isn't, doesn't happen magically. There's no spell you can cast. Turns out the whole crossroads, sell your soul, the devil thing, that's not a real thing. It takes effort. And it's no surprise that the level of effort pretty much matches the level of benefit you get, right? This is age old, it has nothing to do with the guitar really, right? It has to do with industry. As guitar players, we are very vulnerable to what I call a shallow knowledge cycle. And that goes something like this. You hear something, and you're like, ooh. I want that sound. I want my musical preference to become my musical capability, right? And so you go and you get it, you work on it, you get it on the neck mostly, and you're like, that seems like I've got it, and then you turn your attention to something else. The result of that goes something like this. Months later, whatever it is, somebody's like, hey, what are you working on? I'm working on the solo at a Hotel California. And you're like, I used to know that. Well, the knowledge you used to have is far less reliable and beneficial than the knowledge you have right now. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn that there are no shortcuts. You already knew that though. If you want some results, you got to put in a certain amount of work. The thing that I played at the top, that was me improvising over a 1-4-5-1 chord progression using triads. That's a product of having a specific knowledge set. And I got that knowledge set and the depth of that knowledge through a certain amount of effort. And what I want to show you today is that level of effort. So I'm going to explain the one, four, five, one progression. I'm going to show you how to play it with open chords. I'm going to show you how to play it with bar chords. And I'm going to show you why those two systems and those two constructs are very limited. Then I'm going to show it to you in triads. And I'm going to show you how flexible those triads are. And then we're going to take an example of that chord progression using triads on a single set of strings. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how to take it around the circle of fifths. And that's the real level of effort, right? That's the workout. And that is, that, that's the level of effort that will get you the, the largest return. Let me show you how it works. Okay, I'm gonna show you this level of effort, this sort of woodshed level of effort. Um, we're gonna be using the one, four, five, one chord progression. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show it to you in the key of A with open chords, then I'm gonna show it to you with bar chords, and then I'm gonna show you the sort of flexibility that triads allow for. And then I'm gonna take one of those sets of, of chord progressions, one of those inversions of the, of the one, four, five, one progression, and I'm gonna take it all the way around the circle of fifths with a metronome. And that is gonna focus you on that work and staying awake. And that is the level of effort that I use to incorporate any new information onto the, onto the fretboard. And it works beautifully. Okay, so the first things first, I'm gonna show you what the chord progression is. One, four, five, one. Let's say we're in the key of A. One, four, five, one is A, D, E, and then back to A. That's one, four, five, one. That's the chord progression in that key. In the open position, I can only play that chord progression for a few keys right, because the open chords are so limited. So bar chords are the next step, obviously. They're a little more flexible. Here's that same chord progression with bar chords, starting on the fifth fret here. One, four, five, one, here we go. A, D, E, A. It's pretty much stuck there. It's the only place I can play it in that key. I can do it if I invert these, um, these bar chords and use the root on the A string first. It looks like this. A, D, E, A. I can play it here and I can play it here and that's basically it for that key. I'm just going to show you how flexible triads are. I'm going to use a string set that has D, G, and B strings. 
This is a, a string set, a set of three strings. Triads are three notes, root three, five. The permutations that you get for a three note structure on a set of three strings is three. So here's A, D, E, A. That's permutation number one. Let's just call it number one. It's the lowest one on the neck. The next one looks like this. A, D, E, A. So now we can play it in two spots. The next one is this. A, D, E, A. And then we're back to the beginning where we started. A, D, E, A. So now I've covered a lot of the neck on a single string set. I can play it in three different places. Now, there are three other sets of three strings. So there's a lot of places to play this. Another demonstration would be here's an A here. A, D, E, A. I can do that on that set of strings three times and the next set of strings three times, and the next set of strings three times. And before you know it, you have that chord progression over the entire neck. The way to get that information so that it's re recallable by you in any circumstance is to work, is to drill it. And the best drilling mechanism is the circle of fifths. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, taking information through this pattern sticks it on the neck, and especially if you do it and remain awake to it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, here's the circle of fifths. We're gonna take this one string set, the D, G, and B strings, this set of strings, and we're gonna just use the chord progression that starts with our root position triad. So for the key of C, which is our first stop here on the circle, here's our C chord right here. This is a root position C triad, right? The chord progression looks like this, one, four, I'm going to take that one shape, one, four, five, one, and starting on C, I'm going to take it around the circle of fifths, and I'm going to use my handy dandy metronome. Here we go. Boom, got one. Setting it at 75 beats per minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that progression, let the metronome play out a bar, and move down the circle of fifths. So this is the level of effort. This is the workout. Okay, here we go. First key is C. One, four, five. One. Next key is G. One, four, five, one. Next key is D. One, four, five, one. Next key is A. One, four, five, one. Next key is E. One, four, five, one. Next key is B. One, four, five, one. F sharp is next. One, four, five, one. One, C sharp is next. One, four, five, one. G sharp is next. One, four, five, one. D sharp is next. One, four, five, one. A sharp is next. One, four, five, one. F is next. One, four, five, one. Back to C. One, four, five, one. 75 beats per minute. Maybe that's a little fast for a first try, but that's the level of effort, precision, and staying awake. I'm saying each one of those chords as they come by. I'm saying each one of those figures, one, four, five, one. What happens is the result at the top where you can play these chord progressions and you can move through them effortlessly because you've drilled it and you've done the hard work, right? That's the key here. You've got to work out. You've got to deepen that knowledge cycle. The more effort you put in when you gain knowledge, the longer it stays with you and the more stable it is and the more, the more um, easily you can recall it when you need it. Okay, there it is. That's the level of effort, right? You saw we unlocked that one, four, five, one chord progression with open chords, very limited, right? They can only work in a couple keys. Bar chords. A little bit better, but they're only stuck on the E and the A string. Triads, play it anywhere on the neck on any set of strings, no matter where you are. Super beneficial, right? And then you saw that workout, taking that idea around the circle of fifths, right? And that's that level of effort. And that level of effort bringing you more benefit. 
and that deepens the knowledge cycle, right? So you don't lose stuff. This level of effort makes you work hard and makes you stay awake. And when you work hard and you're awake while you're working, um, you keep that knowledge. It's not something that you used to know, it's something that you always have. Anyway, I've tabbed all this stuff out. That's on Patreon and I've linked that in the description below. If this channel makes you happy, if you get some value from this and you, then what I'm doing resonates with you and you'd like to show some support, Patreon's really the best place to do that. That platform basically supports this entire effort. And if you choose to pledge there, I wanna thank you in advance. It's super helpful. Okay, this level of effort is what I do all the time. That's how I integrate new information and it really, really works for me. I hope you adopt this and that it really works for you too. And I'll see you next time.